Okay, honest question, when was the last time you heard someone use the phrase movie magic? I've been thinking about that phrase a lot, and the more I think about it, the more it makes sense that that's the phrase that we used. Movies are essentially built on a magic trick, on the illusion of motion, of a moving image. You watching me on the screen, there is nothing physical here. It is motion and synchronized sound that creates the illusion of a presence. It's an entire medium based on what is essentially a magic trick. And because of that, it only exists as illusion. It only exists as this non-physical thing. It only exists when it is played, essentially. So Filmstruck's closing down. It really sucks that it took until the closing of Filmstruck for me to talk about Filmstruck on my channel, and that's partially why I needed to do a vlog about it. I should probably explain what Filmstruck is, was, still is until November 29th, but will soon to be have been was. I am good at vlogging. Filmstruck is a streaming service created by Turner Classic Movies and the Criterion Collection as a rotating streaming library for the greatest films across the world. It is essentially an art house theater in streaming form. There are weekly programs, there are retrospectives, there are really creatively themed double features. Bless them, they did a double feature of The Seventh Seal and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. A few months back, TCM brought a whole library of classic Hollywood films to bring into it so you could watch the greats, your Citizen Kane's, your Casablanca's, your um, On the Waterfronts. There was a love for film in every possible iteration. And this past Friday, they announced that they were going to stop streaming services for Filmstruck, ending at the close of next month, on November 29th. Their official statement, which I can read right here. We are incredibly proud of the creativity and innovations produced by the talented and dedicated teams who worked on Filmstruck over the past two years. While Filmstruck has a very loyal fan base, it remains largely a niche service. We plan to take key learnings from Filmstruck to shape the future business decisions in the direct-to-consumer space and redirect this investment back into our collective portfolios. There's nothing in there about Filmstruck losing money or Filmstruck failing to reach a wide audience. I mean, there are reasons why Filmstruck failed to reach a wide audience that have nothing to do with the actual content of Filmstruck. They didn't port to a single gaming system. We normally watch streaming stuff on our Xbox. We had to buy a Roku to watch Filmstruck on our big TV, and not just on a tablet. The Surface was only two years old. The Surface was only two years old. It was this, this infant of a thing. Again, streaming as a platform is very young in itself. Like, if you call 2013 the start of the big streaming boom with Netflix's House of Cards, which um, is ending for a number of reasons, it really is... Streaming is a very, very recent phenomenon, and we don't appreciate how unstable it all is. It's hard to curate something that is constantly in motion, build a sense of taste, build a sense of subjectivity, build a sense of self with an eternally evolving library. Obviously, this isn't the first streaming service to go down. I was a fan of CISO before it went down. And this past month, Drama Fever and Super Deluxe have also gone down, and they were also partnered with Warner Media, who was acquired by AT&T, who apparently can't deal with niche services. How, how do you have a problem with niche services on the internet? The internet is nothing but niche service. This bugs me on a level beyond simply, we've lost another streaming service. It's not just another streaming service. This was Warner Media partnering with a giant of cinephilia to give a wide distribution to films that have normally been only available to film students or people with access to niche art theaters like people in big cities. It's not enough to just simply put a movie on under a heading and a simple genre label. The thing that made Filmstruck great was the extras, the sense of history you got with every collection, the directed by collection, the starring collections, the adapted from collections. There was a story told with their selection of films, a story lost with more mainstream filming services. Think of how many times Netflix has recommended that you watch 
because you watched something that has fuck all to do with whatever you the fuck you just watched. Sure, I'll watch Stranger Things because I watch Snowpiercer. Why, yes, I will watch House of Cards because I watched Melancholia. Sure, algorithms can't curate. Algorithms can't give a sense of history. They can't tell a story the same way that an actual cinephile can, that someone with a love of these movies and this media, this form, can give. And even then, there's the insidiousness of paying a monthly subscription for something that you ultimately will never own. These, this, like, fairy dust, this collection of ones and zeros, this thing that exists for maybe a month or two and then is gone to maybe to some other streaming service, but otherwise wherever. It is this constant now that you have to keep up with, with which you have to keep up. Grammar. It's bad enough that most streaming services out there are terrible at promoting movies older than 1980-something. It's bad enough. But when it's Warner Media doing it, when it's Warner Brothers, when it's one of the titans of the classic Hollywood era deciding that they don't know how to market their own classic library, that they don't know how to promote their own history, it's upsetting. It's very unsettling, and it's very dangerous for the sake of cultural preservation. I should mention this is a world culture, this is a global culture of film that Filmstruck brought. And it was always great about promoting women directors, about promoting queer directors, about promoting directors from marginalized communities. It was wonderful at that. It was a way of bringing the full breadth of human experience, bringing all of that to anyone with an internet connection and enough money for a monthly subscription. Now, the individual components of Filmstruck are not going away. The Criterion Collection is still in business. Warner Brothers is still in business. The TCM is still in business. These individual actors will go on, and they may create a streaming service that will last longer and then Filmstruck and have a wider reach than Filmstruck ever did. And maybe I'm just worried about nothing. Filmstruck is no longer accepting new subscribers, but if you want to catch up on classic cinema, uh, sign up for Mubi. They're great. Sign up for Fandor. They're great. Sign up for Canopy. Uh, they have a monthly cap of six films that you can watch before it resets, but uh, you can get it with a library card. Or even better, buy physical media. Buy the things that you love and want to keep. Buy and own the things that you think are worth preserving. Because it's entirely possible that the people who created that media will not consider it worth preserving. So keep circulating the tapes. Because physical media is dying. And we are already being haunted by its ghosts. Happy Halloween! I'm so sorry I didn't promote Filmstruck on my channel before this! Ooh! Oh my god.